This is the second video in the series for Excel 2013. So in the first video we talked about creating a new Excel file, editing, entering, saving. Now let's talk about more about formulas. So I'm going to open my Excel part 1 which is listed here. You could always go to the open other workbooks if it wasn't listed here. And I'll click on file, save as, and I'll go to browse. And I'll save it as Excel part 2 because this is for video part 2. And I'll click save. So any changes I do will be affecting the part 2. And so the last time we, what we did is in the first video is I started with the basic calculation which is equal A1 plus B1 plus C1 plus D1. And just remember you don't do any plus signs after this. And then I'm just going to highlight this and delete them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this E1 so I can modify the formula. And I'm going to remove the plus sign between B1 and C1. And I'm going to replace it with the multiplication sign. Now if you look at this calculation, you would think the result, what will be the result B? So you're thinking A1 plus B1, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 forza is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. But let's see, if I use the check mark enter, I get the result 15. So why is this case? So to understand this, I'm just going to come to sheet 3 as I've typed something there. This acronym B E D M A S bad math. So this is like a math rule which says when you have more than one operation, so the multiplication and addition, these are called operation. When you have more than one operation happening, what should be done first, what should be done second, what should be done third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So according to this rule, B, brackets are done first, and then things like exponents, like 2 raised to 2, and then division, then multiplication, then addition, and then subtraction. I'm going to come back to sheet 2. Now in this formula, I'm just going to double click it, I'm doing addition and multiplication. So according to the rule, multiplication is done first. So it does 4 threes are 12 and then it goes to the left and starts doing the rest of the calculations. So 12 plus 2 is 14, 14 plus 1 is 15 and that's why I get the result 15 here. So you can try to understand the rule, that's a good thing, but if you want it more control over your answers, just try to understand brackets because brackets are always done first. So now if I wanted that result to be 21, I can double click here and I'll add the brackets around A1 and B1. So you use shift and 9 and shift and 0 to add the brackets. Now I get the result 21. So same calculation different results. Now if I double click on it again or I click in the formula bar and I can click put the brackets around C1 and D1 and I use the check mark. Now I get the result 25 because the first bracket will be done first 2 plus 3 is 5 and then it will do the second bracket which is 4 plus 1 is 5 and then the third step is the multiplication part which is 5 times 5 is 25. I can do one more variation if I remove the brackets around A1 and B1 and I use the check mark. So I stay in that cell so I can keep looking at my formula part. Now it gives me the result 17 because this part is done first, C1 plus D1, which is 4 plus 1 is 5. Then it does the multiplication because multiplication comes before addition. So 5 threes are 15, 15 plus 2 is 17. Okay. So that's the way. Excel calculations work and this is not an Excel rule, this is a math rule, so it's nothing to do with Excel. So we're going to continue doing some more formulas in this video. So now I want to tell you about what is known as a function. Functions are predefined formulas. So let's understand a little more with an example. So up here I had done the calculation equals A1, B1, C1, D1. But say for example, I had a lots of numbers. I had some numbers in E1, F1, G1, H1, all the way up to Z1 
and I wanted you to do a calculation here to add all of those numbers together. Now, if you had to do it, that will take a long time. You'll have to type A1 plus B1 plus C1 plus D1 plus E1, and that will take a long time. So, to solve these problems, functions come into play. So, there is a function called SUM. SUM stands for summation. There is a function called average. So, you can do averages together. So, I'll show you how these functions work. So, whenever you do a calculation, you have to start with an equal sign. So, I'll do it here. Up here, I'll do a function where I want to add A1 to D1 together using a function. So, I'll type equal SUM and I start the bracket and I put A1 colon D1, D for David, and I close the bracket and I use the check mark enter and I get the result 10. Okay. So I could do this calculation anywhere I wanted on this sheet. I could do summation of A1 colon Z1. Doesn't matter. So you see the structure of the formula? Equal sign is a must. Name of the function and the range. What is the range? Whenever you have more than one cell, it's a range of a cell. The ranges are in the bracket. I'll delete this and I'll do it another way. I'll type equal S, U. Now when you type them, the word S and U, you see all the functions starting with the word sum. And you can click on it and they'll give you the explanation what that function does. So there are lots of functions here, which we'll try to get a few of them so you'll get an idea of how to use it. Now if I want the sum function, I can double click on it. And you see it highlights the bracket for me. Highlights it and puts the bracket. Now I just take my mouse, go to the middle of the cell A1 left click and hold it and I drag and you see it puts the colon and everything and now I can hit the enter key or I'm in the habit of closing my brackets and I can use check mark enter or enter on the keyboard and there it is so that's summation I'll show you one more way of doing it which is even easy I'm in the cell E1 that's where the formula needs to go I'm in line with my information, so I can just highlight it like this, including the empty cell. And in the right-hand corner, there is a Auto Sum button. So if I press it, it puts the number 10 in E1. I click on it, and you see it puts the whole sum function. Now you see, I did not type anything in it. No equal, no nothing. I'm going to hit Delete, just show it to you again. I highlight, either like this, or including the empty cell, and I hit the Auto Sum. Now, if I wanted to do the auto sum, say, down here, so I just click on that cell. Now I start the auto sum, and it's making a guess that maybe you want to add these things together, which is sometimes wrong. So all I need to do is highlight the proper range, and you see it replaces that range with this range, and now I have the right result. So I'll just hit delete here. Now say up here, I want to do an average function. So I'll type equal, A-V-E, and you see the word average shows up so I don't make a mistake. I can double click on it. And now I can highlight the range. And I can close the bracket. And there it is. So I got 10 divided by 4, which is the average, average of those four cells. So in one step, I'm able to do two different things. I'll show you the other way of doing average. Next to the auto sum, there is a drop down button. There is a function, the average. I click it. You see, again, it makes a guess that I'm on average of this, which is wrong. E1 is already highlighted. So I can now start highlighting it like this. And then I hit enter. Now, the same way, I'll go to the next cell. In the drop down button, I can choose max. I'm going to highlight the range and I'm going to hit enter. So max means show me what is the highest value in that range. I can go to the next one. I can start the min. Again makes a guess which is not what I want. I want minimum of these four cells. So I highlight it and I use check mark. So it tells me the lowest value is number one. 
So you can highlight any range you want. The only thing to remember that your calculation cannot be within the range. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm just going to highlight this. So if I highlight this whole range, that is fine. But I cannot highlight it like this because the E4, which is where the calculation is going, is also within the range. So this will be a problem. So you just want to make sure your range is outside. Now if I type a number here, 100, should have changed A1 to D9. Oops, I was trying to change this number, but I put 100. That wouldn't change. But if I put 0 0.1, now that should change because it's looking for a minimum value in the range A1 through D9. So it's looking in this range. So that's what this is. Okay. So I'll just delete that. So, so this is the idea of doing functions. So I'll just add an extra element to it. So I'll just click here and I'll add some more numbers. 7, 8, and then 9. Now what I want to do is, up here, I want to do a summation of these four cells and also these three cells in one click. But I don't want to do a summation of this whole range, not the stuff in the middle. So this is what will be called discontinuous range. This is one range and this is another range. Now what happens is when you try to highlight this range, you lose that highlight. To fix that problem, you can hold the control key on the keyboard and you can highlight this. So they both stay highlighted. Now this control button can be used even in Word when you want to highlight different headings. So you highlight one, hold the control button, and then you highlight the second one. So I'll click here and I'll start the auto sum because I want to do summation. You can do it manually too by typing equals sum. It's up to you. I start the auto sum. It makes a guess which is wrong. So I'll highlight the first one. Now I'll hold the control button down on the keyboard and I'll highlight the 789 and you see it puts a comma there and it highlights the rest. And if I use check mark, I get the result 24. I'll show it to you one more time a little differently. I'll start the sum. I'll highlight the first range. Now if you did not want to use the control button, you just put a comma yourself on the keyboard and then highlight the 789. And then I can hit enter. The same way you can do it for average. So I can start the average function, highlight the first range, hold the control, and then highlight the second range. Okay. So you can use it for anything, wherever you want it. Now I'll start the auto sum. Now if I want it, I could do this, hold the control, this, this, and this. So I can do summations like this too, or with combinations of ranges and individual cells. It doesn't matter. Now just to explain to you how these things can function even more, I can do um, summation of one range and I can subtract the summation of another range. So I can do equal, sum, start the bracket. I highlight this range. I'll close the bracket. Then I can put a minus sign and I can put sum again, start the bracket, and I can highlight the second range. So you see what I'm doing is I'm trying to do summation of a range minus summation of another range. So this is important that both the sums have to be there in front of the ranges. So if you put a range and you don't have a function in front of it, let's see, you will get some kind of an error message. So usually you get an error message. I don't know, maybe in this 2013, it's right to fix the problem. So usually you have to put the word sum in front of it. And now you see, this is what the actual answer is before I had the result 2, which I don't even know where that came from, because the Excel program doesn't know what to do. Now you can do anything like that. You can do summation of a range minus average of a range. Till the time you follow this protocol, you are okay. Now if you ever wanted to see what formulas you have applied on your screen, because right now you don't know which cell has a calculation and which cell has a number because you'll have to click on the cell and then you'll have to look at the formula bar. So if you wanted to see it all together, you go to the formulas tab 
and in there you see a button called show formula and when you press it now you see I see my formulas on my screen now when you are done you need to make sure that you turn the show formulas off otherwise I'll keep doing my calculation and I will not see the results of my calculation so you press it now it comes back to the screen again and I can come back to the word home I'll just do one more thing in this video which is called fill handle and then I'll end it so I go to a new sheet by pressing this plus sign on the bottom and I'll increase the zoom the plus sign in the right hand corner now I'm gonna type some things here so I'll type Monday Jan quarter one and I'll put some numbers here say 2001 2002 and then I'll put one two and then two and four so this is Monday now what I want to do is I want to put Tuesday here Wednesday here now you could do it type it yourself or you can use a feature in Excel which is known as fill handle so I'm gonna increase the zoom a little bit more now you see in the corner here there is this tiny square and when I point to it it becomes like a tiny plus sign that plus sign is called a fill handle when I left click and hold the left click when I see that I drag and you see it fills up up to Sunday if you drag even further it will put Monday again same thing I'll do with Jan I point to the corner look for the plus sign now you gotta be careful that you don't use this you see this is not fill handle and this is not fill handle because that is used for highlighting so don't confuse the concepts now if I go to the corner there's the plus sign I can drag it if I went further it will put August now if I had typed the whole word January it will put the whole word February the same way here if I had put M O N it would put T U E and so on and so forth for the quarter one again I point to it so you see there are four quarters in a year then it goes back to one and two I can do the same for the numbers but the problem is if you try to do it on one number so I'll try to do it it will copy only that number so this is good if you wanted to copy the same thing so I'm gonna hit undo but in this case what I want to do is I wanted to do 2001 2002 2003 I wanted to do an increment of one for this to work you have to highlight both the cells together and now you look for fill handle and then you drag so you see Excel understands when you highlight it both that you need to do an increment of one now if I want I can highlight these four cells all together I could even do it all of these together now I look for fill handle and I can drag so you see wherever there was the increment of one there is increments of one wherever there is increments of twos there is an increment of two so this is kind of one of the linear progressions so you can create these type of linear progressions if I had three and six I'll put three and I'll put six here and if I highlight both and I use fill handle now it will do increments according to that three six nine twelve I'll just hit the undo button to come back so that's it for this video in the next video I'll continue on with an example of fill handle and also some more with the formula calculations thank you for watching